can. Donna Susick. Here. Walter Crusell. Here. Tina Sakala. Here. Bob Crisati. Here. Marie Peisner. Here. Scott Ryder. Present. Tim Neville. No Tim yet. Doug McSellen. No Doug. Tina LeBlanc. Tina had a conflict this evening. Okay. Jonathan LeBlanc. Here. Charlotte Riley. Here. Bethany Olette. Here. Melissa Everett. Uh, Jaime Cisneros. Jeff Leonowitz. Here. Chris Cycli. Here. And do I have anybody else on that I did not call? Oh, I see Tom. Tom Hibbard. And Don and Donald. Anybody else? There's a Sam. Oh, Sam. Yep. I see you, Sam. All right. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from January 14th? So moved. All in favor, show of hands. Aye. Aye. All in favor, except um, Jonathan, you'll just be abstaining, right? Yeah, correct. Thank you. Uh, who second that, please? Second. I second uh, it. Bob said you second it. Walter. Okay, thank you, Bob. And Donna, I was absent at the last meeting, but I did accept minutes. I did watch it on YouTube. So great. Okay. Okay. That's perfect. That's a perfect thing to do, Marie. Thank you. Marie. Okay. Special guests, none. Old business. A. We have that last uh, the 10% of the 70% that comes to us after the reimbursement. And they have up to five years and um, we still don't have anything, right? Correct. We don't have, there's no update for phase one or two. There's to phase one or phase two, but phase two has been submitted and we're waiting for the first payment, correct? Correct. Okay. And phase three, I'll turn that over to Chris and to, to Tom Hubbard, if they would, um, oh, I'm sorry, phase three, Chris, we, um, I, Eli right. Whitney, turn that over. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Phase, no, phase, no, 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 no. Phase, phase three of Henry Barnard. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the vent pipe extension was received by JHS. Uh, they're waiting. They were going to go out this Wednesday to do it, but because of the snowstorm on Tuesday, uh, they didn't because that section of the roof is over the cafeteria, which is a slope roof. So it didn't make any sense with the roof on that or with the snow okay. on that roof. So the plan is for them to go out uh, later in the week, next week, um, when the temperatures rise a little bit and it's a little bit safer to go out there to install that. Okay. Uh, once they do that, then they will be, um, they will have completed phase three of Barnard. Great. And that phase three included all the stuff that had to be done with the chimney. Correct. The repointing, yes. the bricks, everything. Yes, the chimney is done. The only the only piece that remains is the uh, the boiler fluid uh, exhaust stack extension. Right, and that was what was causing a lot of the problems, my understanding, right, Jeff? Uh, that's correct. So when they uh, upgraded that boiler to a condensing type, it was a little short, and it was condensing on the uh, the brick, and it's. Not an ideal situation. So once we're done, we'll be out of the woods on that one. So we probably Question. have a couple of more situations like that throughout our buildings. My understand, my speculation that will be. They will be reviewed, uh, you know, after this one for sure. 
Okay, okay. Great. just Marie, a question. a question. So the leaking that we did have at Barnard a couple of meetings ago that was brought up, that has been solved now with the chimney. Is that correct? Those particular leaks at Barnard were not actually from the membrane or the flashing. We had driving uh, rain and it was coming in through the riglets that go behind the brick. And okay. those are just sometimes some unfortunate conditions because they're meant to let the, the water come out of the masonry work. Uh, we also had some seals that we, we re-caulked uh, for some pipe penetrations, but it had nothing to do with the, the roofing me membrane, the material or clogged drains. It was just a driving. Sometimes it happens when we have those heavy winds with driving rains, and that was one of those unfortunate situations. So we can't say that that will never happen again? It would be uh, very unlikely that it, it couldn't be a possibility. It's, it's possible. When you have driving, driving wind and rain, it's very possible to have things leak on you. Okay. Brick and masonry have to have weep holes and um, ability to vent themselves or condensation will build up inside there. And it's way more detrimental to the structure and the wall than to have an incident like this where in that kind of driving rain, we have a little bit of a infiltration of water. Correct? <laughs> that, that's correct. So it's easily cleanable and it's in an area that's really, you know, it looks it looks bad because it's in a hallway, but it's it's not dangerous. We we clean it up and we change the tiles right away. But we would be doing more damage if we try to seal the weep okay. up. That would actually be worse. And again, that storm had like 35, 40 mile an hour winds. So it's not too often this happens. And if it was a really hot day, the Mason area is really hot, like say it was July, it, it would usually evaporate before it had a chance to really work its way in there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so now um, D, Eli Whitney, phase one. So the grant application was submitted. Um, mm -hmm. We are waiting for the state to respond. I did speak to them uh, this morning, actually, <clears throat> regarding their review. Um, they have looked at it, which is a huge positive for us. Um, that's definitely early for them to take a look at the, the grant applications before um, the start of the new month, the next month. So uh, I'm doing what I can to make sure that right. that, that progresses. Right. I, and I think that's what, you know, we just have to do and it just makes for, you know, just a better relationship with the state. Um, how about the right. uh, Casserville Memorial? Is that the same update, Chris? Yeah, it's the same thing. The, the, both grants went in at the same time um, and they had some questions this morning regarding both, both of them. So. Okay, great. Okay. Um, the energy performance contract. Are we seeing the we're, light we're, of day we're getting to get closer. rid of the third party? We're getting much closer. TD Bank uh, sent an amendment for review um, for us. Uh, that is in process with legal. And then once uh, all that gets hashed out, I would imagine it'd be going up to the town manager's office for signature. And I don't want to talk too much about it because it's under review between the two parties. Okay, great. But we'll, we'll just keep on it because that's something that will be affected in budget time. Absolutely. So, all right. Transfer um, clean energy. Melissa, you want to update everybody on what we've been doing with the clean energy? Um, yeah. So last time uh, this committee okayed a short list of buildings to be for us to request um, green bank assessments. And so we've been in touch with them and we're just in the process of assembling a little bit of data that they need, Donna and I. And I think we will need from Jeff, the Eversource account numbers for half a dozen or so buildings. And I will send the finalized list to Jeff copying. Right. Unless anybody else wants to make sure, but that's, that's the only demand on staff that we need. Right, and we're gonna, we'll probably, Jeff, once Melissa and I get, get the roof years, you know, that we're gonna send them, we'll, we'll just verify, have you verify that we're reading everything correctly. Okay. We have a pre pretty good list of everything, and um, I just haven't had the time to actually sit down and do it, and I'm, that'll be my next week's project. You're doing a great job. 
Right. Well, you know, and the thing is, is if we have success with, you know, it's economic to do the Henry Barnard, then we can see down the road that we'll be able to do our other schools and have some, you know, positive feedback on, on our ability to be solar. Okay, any other comments from the um, group on, you know, going to Green Bank and, you know, looking to see if we can get a solar presence, any input from anybody? Marie? Um, I, I watched it. I watched the meeting, as I said. Um, I am in agreement that we should look at as many buildings as we can. Um, I also liked Bethany's idea of looking at ground space. Um, Correct. You know, um, so yeah. I thought that was a great idea. Yep, um, and, and we're going to do I that we should on the proceed. one where she recommended. Pardon? Yes, we're doing yeah, that. No, I'm just, I, I think that was a great idea. And if we have other spaces that come to our mind, um, you know, as you said, Melissa, it's no cost to us. So to get numbers, if it's a no cost, to give us some numbers and some guidance, um, even if it's not for now, but maybe in the future, I don't see any harm in trying. Well, other we're going to send them all, all 38 buildings, Marie. We're yeah. going to update the roofs on those and all 38 buildings. And, you know, the the ground space we're looking at is um, if we can move the dog park. Right, right. That would but, be great you know. for the WPCA. So, so that would help there. No, I thought that was a great idea. Thank you. So we're trying. We're trying. Okay, transfer station update. I imagine that's why Donald's come to visit us. See, you, you hit it right on the head, Donald. So good evening, everybody. So tonight uh, we're going to review. We're going to quickly review the the drawings that have been updated through our consultant Anchor Engineering. And how I told him, how I told them how to handle this is that we're going to put in um, we're going to put in everything. And if then he's going to uh, come up with a cost estimate. Then if we have to value engineer things out. I'd rather take things out than have to worry about putting them in because the design is really kind of based on um, the entire thing working. So again, uh, and if again, if if the if they do the cost estimate and it's really close to what we have and it comes in lower, great, we're going to keep everything. If it comes in higher, we can you know we may be able to do some of the work ourselves, some of the asphalt removal, some of the things again that could be just more expensive uh, for that. So that's the goal. And so the goal tonight is again, kind of give, I wouldn't say final approval, but kind of uh, final consent that this is the direction we want to go. Um, and we're just going to go, we're going to go through it kind of step by step. Um, they did do the percolation test. It did pass. It's uh, one site is at two inches per hour. The other one's at four inches per hour. You try to get between one and 30 typically. Um, and then below one, it's too fast. Anything above 30, you gotta start doing amendments. But so there is room for a septic system. The septic system has been designed and it is in a um, unique, the location's in a unique spot where you wouldn't think it would go. Uh, and, the, and the soils that did fail are another one of those kind of weird things that you would think that they would pass, but they didn't. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, great. So this is just the title page, fun kind of stuff that I'll take it from here. All right. So I'm gonna start right from, can everyone see that okay? Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna start right at the beginning where you'd be pulling up uh, on the road. The existing gate is in gray, which is right here. And it was sort of like a compost pile up on the left side over there. So. That's just for orientation. Here's the existing gate and the existing fencing that's through there. So you're going to come through, and again, you're going to come to um, you're going to come to a basically a stop sign with a stop bar. <clears throat> After you clear, if there's any cars coming this way, you're going to clear through, and you're going to drive down onto the um, relocated scale. Is going to be right here. And just for reference sake, here is where my hand is kind of moving around the screen, that's the existing scale right now. So the new scale is gonna be over here. So by pushing it up over there too, we also can build this and keep this kind of, and keep the old one going. We can put the new one in. We There's ways to, to kind of move everything around. We, we should be able to handle all that kind of um, logistics with that. 
by doing so, it kind of gives an opportunity. So if you want to go on a scale, then you can go do your thing then go out. If you're just dropping off cardboard and all those other things that uh, require you to do it now, we're going to have a complete unloading area over here. You pull up, you get your stuff, and after you get done doing what you're doing, you drive around and you come back mm -hmm. out and you go back out again. You're not going back on the scale. You're not going, you're not turning around someplace weird. You're just driving through and everything is in basically in a circular motion. At one point we did have the uh, cardboard compactor for, we did that had it located over here. It was also pointing in this direction. I didn't like that because in case we did have an odd time when the, when the transfer station was open and we needed to get a truck in there, we we're gonna be going against traffic and I just, I just wasn't feeling it. I just don't want to deal with that kind of stuff like that. So we kind of moved it around and we moved the employee parking, which was here. We moved that to over here so we could pull the loader in. Over here, we're going to have an electrical hookup so we can have a block heater for the loader uh, around this area. And so now that the uh, future cardboard compact is going to go here, a truck would pull up back in it's got nothing it will not harm or be in the way of the circulation pattern while it's picking up or unloading and turn around and off you go from there okay so then i'm gonna i'm gonna pan out a little bit so after you get off the scale you kind of if you got to go to the two things you kind of do your thing one-way traffic pattern you come around you do your thing you go back out, you go back on the second scale, you wave hi to Tim, give him your number and pay him and off you and off you go okay. after here. And this is uh, one way. And if you don't have to go back on a scale, we're doing leaves, we're doing all that kind of good stuff like that, you just bypass that and off you go. There okay. will still be, there's gonna be two uh, traffic signals um, here and here, both on all directions for green light, red light, in case we have to flip it around for whatever reason, if this scale is down, we can walk this way, we can, we can work it all out. So that's still gonna happen. Uh, we, we decided like these were the Jersey barriers, but we can get those at a, at a very, very good, if not uh, complimentary rate from local uh, concrete place. We can use some of those other ones through here. So that's what's gonna line that edge and that's how we're going to, and that's how basically we're going to, we're going to take it. We're going to be able to do some of these things ourselves and to help again, save our money, to, uh, our highway division will be able to install those once we get them ourselves. So the area that that's right here, you see TP one, which is test pit one, two, three. Uh, these all failed. These did not pass the percolation tests. Oh, okay. wow. So here's the scale house that's existing right now, right where my hand is, and you can see that there, right below the R and 100. All this, this whole area failed, and it failed spectacularly uh, as well. These areas here, four, five, six, and seven, all passed. So the closer to the turning of that of that road, that's where this actually was passed. So that's where the septic system is going to go in the uh, distribution bars. So okay, okay. So the water main, we're gonna, we are, we have, this is just showing me we have a water main that connects to near the back of the hydrant. There's an existing two inch, it's gonna run up the roadway. We did talk with, again, I was able to get the larger size. We're, we're not gonna use copper. We're gonna use the HDPE pipe, which again, allows us to go, it's a lot less expensive and considerably less amount of joints because of the copper tubing, you can only go about 50 feet. This one you can go up to 200 feet before you have to put a, a splice in. So that's four less connect or three less connections right there, possible leaks and whatever. And it's just as good. We will, we did have, uh, we will put a water line, a water line in for the doggos. Um, that's going to be okay. again. So that's going to cut across here. So that's all taken care of. So I'm going to go back down to the entranceway again. Here's the gate. You're coming in. So the water main is going to come in through here, feed into the yard hydrant, the proximal location for that, and then it's going to feed into this final destination will be the obviously the scale house. All right. So drainage, we are going to handle all the drainage on site by placing it by grabbing the water in obviously the low points, coming up to another one here and dumping it off into basically like a uh, 
detention basin, if you will. And if it actually, if it does get so much water that it breaches it, we'll have a design and overflow that'll go out and it'll leak uh, onto the natural grass that's there now. Water coming now comes through the back here through here and goes out this way anyways. Some of these contours are pointing that way already. So it's just a natural thing. If we can't get it to absorb into the ground here, it'll just go over it and go out. There will be some sort of little berm through here along with some new uh, six foot fencing to keep some of those uh, machines, if you will, and other sort of try to, try to keep some of the uh, ATVs and other, again, other machines out of there. So I'm gonna blow this up a little bit here. So coming out of the back of the scale house, the this will be a sewer pipe that goes through. There'll be a couple clean outs. There will be a thousand gallon septic tank uh, placed here. There's gonna be a small distribution box here and a very small, only 16 feet long um, galley. And there's just a, another one reserved one. So it is a really small system. So we kind of dug up a lot of stuff. And if you haven't been up there, you'll see all the little ant hills that were everywhere. But we had to do it. And again, this is the best spot for it. And it all passes. So it's a very simple solution to kind of a nagging problem that's always been up there and kind of a just kind of a bummer for my, you know, for staff that uh, they got to yeah. do the business like tomorrow morning. You know, it's kind of rough being outside, you know, kind of going to the bathroom. But, you know, it is. So the drainage works, everything. Uh, is really where everything is positive pitching. We're not pumping anything. We're not doing kind of weird uh, uh, grading things. We're just, we're getting, everything is done in just the simplest amount of terms and just getting the water to move and getting everything off the, the, the pavement through there. We have designed pretty much everything and it's that it's all waiting to go. We got fencing, we got the slide gate uh, details here. There's everything just waiting to go. Uh, we have a curbing and all the kind of good stuff. And so the septic system is completely designed. It's waiting to go. And we were good through there. I just want to show you one other thing. Like I was telling you, we have all the soil test results here. So that's like I was telling you, the test pit one, two, and three on completely unsuitable. Everything else looks good through for getting loamy sand. We have sand. We have all, it, Everything is really good, but the big the big take home point right here again is our perk test results, two um, two minutes per inch and four minutes per inch, spot on. Everything's good, and we couldn't have asked for anything better for that. So again, staff will be able to, you know, not do what they're doing now. So I, I'm I'm so happy for that for staff, and I'm sure everybody else here on the committee is too. That again, everything is that's that's a gigantic upgrade for for them. And also okay, so we're use one of our uh, generators that we did get from the military surplus. We're going to utilize that. Uh, that's going to be placed over here. I want to go back to the layout. Hold on one second. So the generators, uh, we, we were able to secure two generators from Army surplus. Uh, one of them only has 400 hours on it. And another one, I think, only has 1,100 hours on it. So we're gonna we're gonna take it off the wheels. We're gonna leave it here, and the best thing about that it's military grade. So we'll be able to run the compactor that's over here off of it. So we don't because all we have single phase power coming into the site, <coughs> Town Farm Road, Ecology Drive. It kind of cuts through. So the best part about that, like I said, is this requires a, a, a the trash compactors are a three phase 208 service that can handle this. If the scale house goes down, we've got single phase to uh, 140, 120 to 4, we can handle that. So that's the best part about that machine right there. And we'd have to pay a dime for it. So that's what we're going to use that one for. And we still have another one in spare. So a lot of, a lot of neat little things out here. And it's just going to be such a wonderful uh, project upon completion. And, and even during the construction, I think it's just going to be great for, for everybody knowing how that's, how it's all going to come to be. And I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be great. So this is what we have and I'll be happy to entertain any questions. And we have any questions for Donald? I do. Go ahead, Charlotte. Um, so random question. Um, is there room where the existing residential compost and mulch area is? 
to have a small area for like a swap shed like some other towns have because that's a pretty popular recycling option a what a swap okay. shed so people bring items there like oh, oh. Used bicycles and stuff like that or whatever that people can just pick up if they wanted them and and drop things off instead of dumpster diving right that is a fabulous idea mm. I thought you said slop, like kitchen no. slop. <laughs> so, that wouldn't make any sense. I'm not ready for food waste yet. I, I know that's a hot topic, but we are not. We're not ready for food waste. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> swap shed. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. I. It's a great idea. Monitoring it is going to be interesting because I. At what point do we throw stuff out? Like, you know, they just instead of it. If someone doesn't take it, at what point do we just chuck it every every week? Do we just whatever's left over on Tuesday morning, we oh. chuck it, or are we just a running? I think know? they do it like my friend lives in Stafford, and they say like like once a month it gets just thrown out, and then it starts over again. Okay, yeah. instead of take instead it to Goodwill, right? Okay, yeah. I'll I'll talk to that right. person and see how how they do that. Okay, there's plenty of room over there. I don't think there's really anything. There's just a um, what we call an engineering roll of leak off where the roadways here to just kind of like it just kind of water we're going to force it to go this way yeah there's plenty of room we can expand if you see on the screen there's plenty of room we can move this over and we can i think that i don't think that's really a big deal and i'm sure we can find some sort of uh either a okay. small, a small trailer i mean a small dumpster whatever we'll, we'll we'll try to come up with something we can yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, like just something with a cover mm. over. It could be open yeah, air. A little lean to. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like a lean to. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll be happy to call them and look into it. Cool. Thanks. Good idea. Yep. Any more questions? Any like emerging need for publicity or, you know, a little think group to refine it or anything? I'd be happy to be part of that. I think it's a really great idea. Well, you can when we have the budget hearings because this will go through budget, right, Donald? Yes, it is, and, and and like I said, hopefully I can have some consent from you folks tonight about this is what we're, this is what we're going to do and where we're going to go, and that way I can kind of finish this up and he can, uh, Monica can, can finish okay. it and, and get it. I guess the best thing for me to do with this because it's really hard um, to do remotely. Is there anyone who has any? Um, comments that they would not be in favor of us supporting this as Donald brings it to budget for the council. Can I just ask, because I can't see the whole thing now, Donald, and I know we've gone back and forth a hundred times. Is this one or two scales? It is two scales. Okay. Thank you. That's right. I, Donna, I had a question. Go ahead, Bethany. At one point we had talked about a cut over access point in case one scale went down and you had to use the inbound scale as the outbound as well. Is Was that just missed on this or is that taken out of consideration for some reason? No, how that would work is if this like say where this, if this scale went down here, yeah, it would we would block off this area and have the cars go through here and they would be able to go up, do their thing, come back around and that's why the red light, green light Traffic lights would would do it. If the scale went down, we would spin them around and kind of do it go the exact opposite way. Okay. So there there is provisions. That's why I said the which says here the traffic lights for scales. That's in case again red light green light just to, yeah. just for that occasion. Just one question: Being that we have two scales, we're purchasing a new scale. Are we using the existing scale or purchasing two new scales? The new the. The old the the old scale, which is down through here, mm -hmm. that's the original scale. That's going to be moved up here. Okay. And the new and the new scale would be placed here. So we're purchasing one new scale. That would be the hope. If okay. Again, if if things go if the bidding climate is bad and we get astronomical prices, um, we could easily just leave like so we can value engineer that out we could leave the approaches in here and not put the scale in there but do other things to it pipe bring the electrical up to it and bring things right. that we need up to it and leave it 
then move on from there. Then, then yeah, we talked about that before. If one, if we went with one scale, we would have provisions for a second at another time. So. Right. And if we again go through another round of blood, whatever it is, but at least now I can get a full understanding again of how much that's really going to be. And again, if we're close, we can we, we can put it on the street. And if it goes completely haywire, then yeah, okay. Either value engineer out, or come back to you folks and say, hey, look, you know, can you can you get me another twenty or thirty grand? But who knows. 200,000, who knows? <laughs> budget friendly, we need to be budget friendly. Right, and again, that that's what the that's what the beauty part is. Again, like, like uh, just, I'm gonna blow up the uh, compact area here. So this area is all concrete, it's a 60 by 12 inch, 60 by 12 foot wide by probably a foot thick because it has to be set on concrete to be able to handle the weight and the trucks and everything. If that's just not in the cards right now, then it will give us too much money. I can just take that out because again, it's the design is relatively modular, if you will, because like I said, like this area is one section. I can just take that out and we'll, it will again, we'll run the pipe, we'll leave it out over here and we'll move on. I'll take this out. And that's how we, and that's how we can do it because we still have 15, 16, 17 and 18, which are the cardboard dumps, the, the car, regular cardboard dumpsters right now. And we can, I can just leave that in there. We'll put this in at a later date. And that's the kind of beauty of some of this stuff. The employee parking, just kind of let that go for now. And just make, instead of having that as pavement, we can maybe just use it as gravel. There's, there's, there's ways to, there's ways to, again, value engineer it, or I think we can get things down and again, or we can do it some of it ourselves. Um, that's going to be the, that's going to be a big help. So we do have the capability of doing, again, some of the stuff, again, like removing the fencing. My staff can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, putting in this stuff, we can do that ourselves. So that's what's going to help. We can drive down the cost that way. I like the free generators too. That was very good. Yeah, we got that. Uh, uh, Chief Fox sent me a message and said, "Hey, you can, can you use two generators?" Because they went down uh, wherever they go to get their stuff, and I said, "Sure." And we put in four. We got them. We, we good. Someone, I don't know, they met them somewhere. We, we picked them up locally in Connecticut and drove them back and we got two of them. Two fifteen. Excellent. Very good. 215 kilowatts. So. Yeah. Nice. Working together. I like that. Good. Nice job. I have one more question. Go ahead, Go ahead Charlotte. Um, the gate, is that still like the fancy gate that we were talking about when we started this discussion? I call it fancy because it was supposed to have like, I don't know, like a card reader or something. So they didn't have to like, you know, break the bolt if something went wrong or something like that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, of okay. Uh, I can't, I will have to get back to that one, Charlotte. I don't okay. know. I know right now that it's, it's a sliding gate. And I know that it's oper how it operates. I can't seem to locate how it operates. I'll get back to you and I'll send you uh, an email to everybody on that. Okay. I saw it there, it said remote gate. Remote. Yeah, is it, yeah that, that was what it was. Is it remote or? Keypad, right? Keep, yeah, something like that because they're having problems with the locks and then you have to change it all the time or something, which is why you wanted to do it this other way. We have multiple because Verizon and Towers and everybody that's in the back has their own key. Yeah. We have, we have lock, unlock, 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 unlock. And if somebody makes a boo boo and doesn't lock it back, All right. the lock, then they then we double, then we got to go cut them off. And, right. Then, yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare. So, okay. Yeah. So I will, I will actually, I, yeah, I don't see it here. That's, let me get back to you on that one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good catch. Any more comments, questions, concerns? So I will, we will assume that we are all in favor of this moving forward to budget time um, for the council to put it in the budget and for Donald to find out what he actually can get um, for a cost on this. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next item. Uh, the master plan. Um, Jeff, we have, um, you had a few things that you still wanted BL to do. 
And I know everybody's moving forward on a lot of the stuff and everybody's been very pleased the feedback of um, what the staff was able to do with the uh, reorganization and uh, get a lot of uh, money transferred to show that we have confidence in that. So do you know when we'll have a final um, report from BL? Donna, Donna, just one more thing on the on the transfer station. Can you sure. email us those plans? Or are they emailable? So you, so Doug could take a look at it, seeing he's not here. He can get it off YouTube. Well, I know you could do that, but he, you know him; he likes to see the whole plan. Talk about well, I think we're two different things, Donna. Walter, you're talking about the transfer station, right? Transfer yeah. station, yes. Yes. That, okay, I'll st I'll email it to Don. I think you were thinking about the. This was. I don't know what back, back on the transfer station. Can we have the plan back on the more? transfer station? Yeah. Well, those would be attached to the minutes anyway. Donald would get them to Tina. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just just like I said, if, if we'll it's probably it. a PDF and just email it out to the to the committee, it'd be great. I will. We'll, hey. get, we'll take care of it. Thank everyone. you. So to answer your question, I really thought I sent something out Monday afternoon should have been the final report and if i if i did not attach it or i miss that email i do apologize so the final report is well you know what i may have missed it jeff so we do have a final report and that Correct. report has been submitted to us and we should probably approve that and send it to whoever gets our final reports i will i will double check i i I really thought I did. If I did, I do apologize. I will make sure everybody will get another copy this afternoon. No, I, I probably missed it because I am actually away on, I guess, it, vacation. It came in on, on, on Monday. I see it here now. Yeah, it's like 140 something pages. We got it. Correct. That's the one. Yep. Yes, okay. It was very on large. I'm not going to lie. I didn't open it. <laughs> I didn't open it either. I'm going to put it on the next. <laughs> Not going to lie. It was so I, I can give you the Reader's Digest. The first, the first uh, seventy pages are pretty much the you know, the new items. The back half of it was the council presentation that they did uh, back in October, I believe. So, um, all the information that we were looking for are pretty much like in the first thirty. Okay. It might help you narrow down the, the reading on that. It can be quite long if you go page by page. <laughs> right. All right. So we'll, I'll put it on next agenda and we can get that so that it's finalized and it, it goes to the council. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Walter, for finding it. I was panicking. I thought I, I thought I sent it. No, I actually didn't see it in my emails, but it's sporadic when I get them out here. So I apologize. That's okay. We can resend it to you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, new joint facilities committee. I put in the link because people can't seem to find things. So hopefully they'll be able to go there more frequently. And um, Scott, I appreciate you sending that to me and all the stuff that you do to keep everything updated and keep everything flowing towards it. Do you have anything else you want to contribute to the, okay. No, right. thank New you. <clears throat> Roof referendum revisited. I'm going to open it up to the floor and who would like to go first on this? Gina? My position is going to be the same as it was last year, and I think that we need to do one. I always okay. agree with the um, concurrent planning. I think that's a good way to go, and I'm glad that we're doing that with some of the phases of the roofs that we're doing. But we're going to need a, both a roofs and a uh, roads referendum, and I'd like both of them to hopefully get on the ballot. So okay, well, roads aren't in my <laughs> are in our jurisdiction, well, I but I do hear you. Yes. So when do we have to present this? Because we don't well, have to have like a public hearing. We're gonna do that again. It's by like July, August. so we can get on. Oh, okay. And we can vote on it. And remember, we have less meetings in the summer. Right. Um, and then I think the last time it can be dealt with is something like September in order to get on the ballot for November. 
Okay. Yeah, it's usually the first week of September. We have to, the council has to approve it to go on the ballot. Okay. Yeah. So, Do we have to have a public hearing before that? Yeah. For this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's we're part, have, yeah, I mean, it's part of the a lot process. Of, we would okay. need a lot of education yeah. and a lot of publicity from months and months prior. So I think yeah. we need to make a decision soon and go from there. So I guess for me, which one are we in favor of the smaller plan that we were supporting was like 13 million or the giant roofing referendum that Jeff came up with first that was like all encompassing. I think that we talked about trying to get it under 15 million, right? Weren't we thinking like 13 and a half or some, some number like Which that? Which is what we, we achieved. It, yeah, to make it palatable, especially if it's going to be sitting next to a roof referendum. I think we need to think about it <clears throat> that way. Roads. I'm sorry, a roads. A roads, yeah. Yeah. Right. But we also have to promote the fact that with roofs on certain buildings that have education based purposes, like any of our schools, we're getting 70.7% back. Right. Which well, is the big 71%. thing was, Scott, Scott, you did say the big thing when we talked about this before is the marketing of it. And, and it does, it's going to have to be marketed correctly with the numbers so that the taxpayers see that there's actually going to be a savings down the road. Very much like what they what they presented for the reorganization of the buildings i mean they showed by doing it what we're going to actually save and and the same thing is going to have to be done with the roofs that by doing it now in instead of doing it in phases we're actually saving money um yeah so I, 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 mean, I thought any... the presentation for buildings was extremely creative so if we can come up with that i think i think it'll be a win right because you can talk to any group of parents or families or voters that live near school X. And you can tell them that, you know what? Henry Barnard's roof took us three summers to fix slash replace, however you want to phrase it. And we still only did 90% of it. There was 10 or 11% of it that wasn't old enough to qualify for reimbursement. So we didn't touch it. So yeah, it all comes down to that message of if the next school is Whitney or Hazardville, and then after that is the police station, and after that is these other 10 buildings, but it takes two or three years to do each one, or we can have a three or four or five year plan to fix everything that needs to be fixed for now, that it, it's all in how you sell it, pitch it. I'm though with Gina, we have to be concurrent. Cannot, we have to have certain phases in the budget and we have to start but we have to have yeah. a referendum yeah and and to your point donna like you you need a plan b in case it doesn't pass which is what we're doing but again three years we to need to keep store. going with plan b <laughs> we yeah, have plan know, but, b, b moving along right but hey, it's donna, frustrating to tell those 400 families at henry barnard that sorry it took three years to fix your roof and then who's ever next will get to you in two, three, or, you know, four years from now. That's all. Don, didn't you say that you were going to have the school security guy come and talk about vestibules? Gary no, Harrison. I'm not going to put that Gary one. Harrison. You're not going to go. Yeah, we can't do that. I think that's, that, that, it gets too complicated. That's next on the agenda, though. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, the problem with. Right now we have roofs and roofs for schools get 70% reimbursement. Town roofs don't. And I think that we have enough confusion with roofs going forward on a referendum. You put in windows and vestibules. Now you have stuff in there that we could get reimbursements, but we don't know what they're gonna be. Right. And, and all the rates this might stuff be different. can be done in budget. It's not a re it's not a referendum need. Roofs, um, vestibules are. When Brian was here, there were one hundred twenty five thousand dollars to do a vestibule. It yeah. can be done in the budget. You don't want to go to referendum for things that you can do in the budget. And I and I think that you know we have enough trouble explaining everything with reimbursements from the state and coming from a different pocket. So I think for me. I think it gets to be too big a referendum. So I'll, yeah. I'll, 
if I if if there's a consensus though from the committee that we need to put vestibules and windows in with it, then that's the way we'll go forward. But I think I need a consensus from that from that. Scott, you want to have a comment? Yeah, I mean we can't really talk about vestibules. We can talk about windows publicly um, because of security issues. But no, I think we should focus just on the roofs. Like you said, you, you have to protect the top of your building before you protect the insides. Right. And, you know, for me, vestibules, you know, especially with now with COVID and everything else that, you know, we really need to have a, you know, a, a, an area that's a common area where you have a, an exchange of, you know, students and parents and things like that, that you control the, the flow of traffic for lack of a better way to describe it. I know I've been out here, you know, with my family and dropping off at daycare, there's a vestibule there, you know, and it, it functions very well for, you know, controlling, you know, drop-offs and pickups and things like that. So I think they're really important and it needs to happen. Well, they are important in every school every building should have one, but every school needs one. And we have talked about this in the joint securities committee that I'm on as well. <clears throat> and some buildings have a natural landing spot for these vestibules and some don't. So you can't say which ones do because by omission, you're assuming the others that you didn't mention out loud don't. They're all in the works, but I would focus our mission because we're talking about just the general facilities, the general buildings on the roofs. And if Gary comes to us and says, hey, we can finish up what we're doing if you include this, then that's a separate conversation. But I, I, I would think we wanna protect the buildings through the roofs first, maybe windows, but the vestibules is more of a security concern. Well, everybody's gonna see what the vestibule looks like. It's the stove vestibule. It's really just a wall. It's, it's the... Yeah, Parkman has hardware I, isn't. Yeah, yeah, it's more the software then, and that's why Jonathan's joined us because he's because on the joint security with you, and I'm hoping that if I have two people over there, they can take care of that. So I think that that needs to be brought to the council at budget time, and I think that the joint, you know, security committee needs to, you know, work with facilities and get the funding to do that. We don't necessarily need details. We just need to be able to ask for the money. So, and windows I think are, are paramount important. And we don't even have numbers on those, do we, Jeff? I have some uh, numbers, um, but they're, they're astronomical for like one school. So I, I just, I've been focusing on just trying so to- So they need a room. referendum? Uh, just for Hazardville Memorial. Um, it's a little dated. I'd have to update it for this year, but it's over like 2.4. Okay. And that's, is that the cost of the windows and the installation? That would be for the complete replacement. And then um, I'm also planning on uh, some, I call it the the toxic trilogy for stuff after some of the things with JFK. So I'm just anticipating these types of headaches with those windows. And then okay. very likely the other stuff behind the unit ventilators as we pull them out. So it's gonna be a, a labor of love. And then at the same time, do we replace the unit ventilator since we make that big hole in the wall because they're all right behind the windows or... So I've been trying to figure out what would be the best approach. Okay, so the state pays for the windows, cost of the windows, and we bore the cost of the installation is my understanding. So have you put that in your analysis, Jeff? I think it was about uh, the, 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 the material. It's very labor intensive because of abatement. That's where the, the prices start getting up there. So, you know, real costs, like, again, this is, they're not very refined. They're not like the roof numbers I presented to you folks, but high level 2.4 million. If we look at like the labor to materials, you're, you're almost like 50-50 to some extent, but you know, 
I want to do some testing and some other stuff over there so we have a better idea of what we're dealing with. Don't don't there. test. Just assume you have it. <laughs> uh, yes, that would be just that would assume be correct. you have it. Yep. <laughs> but yes, we we need to do that and uh, we need to start poking in a little bit more uh, on the on the windows. I would like to start with Hazardville because they're the oldest window sets and they're they're the most costly. You look at the school wings; it's their window walls. So. Uh, we could probably save a boatload of uh, money just by replacing the windows by not heating the outdoors. <laughs> right. So Charlotte, you up for that? Yeah, dude, those windows at Hazard will scare me. They're they're terrible. Are you up for you're up for being the champion of the windows? <laughs> I don't think about that one. <laughs> But well, yeah, you know what? Look, look, look at the full, you know, the full thing and see if you see some yep. sort of a plan and, you know, maybe okay. Jeff can send you some more information because yeah. we need, we need somebody to get out there and, and, and champion. I, you know, I pushed for windows in 2000, there was windows and all the schools were supposed to be replaced after the additions went on and that never happened. So, you know, disappointing, yeah. but you know, it is what it is. So, I have, so Charlotte, I have you a want quick to question on windows and well, because we'll have to send a plan to the council as to what we think they should do to, you know, do the school windows. And we probably should include town windows as now we're seeing that we are, um, we've taken giant leaps towards reorganization and knowing what our our facilities are that we need. So it isn't just school windows, it's right. everybody's windows. So. That's a lot of money. <laughs> well, go look at the, you know, the big chart that I yep. gave everybody when they first came on, that yep. $101 million. It, yeah. you know, we've, we've really picked at a lot of it, yep. but there's still a lot of it left. And, and I think the windows are critical. Um, the thing is, is if you had the, had the budget and the ability, if you renovated to new all your elementary schools that you knew you were going to need, 70% of everything would be paid for by the state. That's a discussion for another day. All right. Donald has something to say. Donald? Yeah, <laughs> to, uh, to to Gina's point, I to about time frame and things like that. I did prepare um, our own internal timeline for like the roads program, and basically the roof program is gonna the roof referendum would be nearly exactly the same. And if I could take two minutes of everyone's time, I just want to share how long of a process this is. And everybody can kind of understand. Um, and again, this was completely modeled after our 2010 one. Whoa. So, we meet, so we're going to be meeting within the next couple of weeks if we're going to do roads to actually start again with subcommittee. Then there's subcommittee meetings that to, to just kind of review things and they, then it all keeps going back. There's another, so after we finalize scenarios, we do meetings again, the, the subcommittee gives us the final blessing. Then we go to council for a special presentation Back in 2015, when I was here, the the mayor uh, had an advisory council meeting that we actually presented at. We have to we have to send something by June, the middle of June, for bond council. Then we do another presentation after changes from input from uh, from the committee, from council, and from the general public. We change. We do it again. We finalize it. We have a public hearing in August. The last day to approve the roads uh, 2021 question on November ballot would be September 3rd. We have to notify the Secretary of State by the September 18th, then it hits the ballot. So there's a lot of steps kind of cooking back and forth that's got to happen. So I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm just saying that if there is going to be some movement, um, Gina was correct. It's like, you know, again, we really start getting the public hearings out in the summertime, but there's a lot of stuff that needs to be finalized um, in the, the April through 
June part of it to really kind of just kind of get things going and get it out and get it done. So there is a lot. And I just don't want to, I just want to make certain that we don't lose sight of it. If that's the road forward that we got to start getting on things pretty soon in the next couple months. So yeah. that's basically the just chime in one line about when we did the performance contract referendum, we were, you know, pretty early in the year doing media campaign and a direct mail piece mm -hmm. that got the basic message solidified yep. and then you know that yeah, melissa's right we did that in june but we were in june we were ready to go so on we were preparing yeah. so if, it's not too early if donna if june you folks were ready we're ready to go that means you back it up <laughs> you're we're already back in february and march that so we got to get you know there's a lot oh, yeah of, there's, you well, know. you know what, could we relook at the last one? Because I, you know, I think the one that we, I wanted to present to council that never made it to council, which was the like $13 million referendum. If Jeff could just five. look at that one more time and bring it back to us, we can send that to council and let them, you know, fall in their court. Okay. Yes, I will. Uh, I'll look. I think it was uh, thirteen point five, uh, and we had something like a seven point something reimbursement from the state on that target. Let me let me look at the numbers. Make sure they're still jiving. Update them for the current year. Uh, we had a similar flow path in that one, like uh, Donald just showed with the roads. That was that. The, the dates are pretty much the same because it's the same process. So yeah, I'll I'll get that working. We'll get that out. Uh, I'll get that out to everybody before our next meeting, so we can have a look at that. Right, because right now we have the funding for the first phases of the, the Eli Whitney and the Hazard Memorial. So, you know, you're going to maybe have to adjust for that if, if need be. And you know, Actually, just give it, we, give it a spruce up. And, uh, you know, I, I think you did a lot of work on roofs. And I think that yeah. it's time everybody saw it. Absolutely. I do. Well, I think I will need to change it because I think some of the, the facilities might... Um, that were on there might not be there, <laughs> so we yeah, might need no, to that. Yeah, and that's 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 all we're asking you to do. So I, is I so is that the third that thirteen point five is the figure you want want to hang around? Because I, I remember doing a nine point five. I I thought the thirteen point five was the one that we were. Okay, that'll be my target number. Okay. Yeah, thir thirteen five. I I have a I have a question here. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah. Um, for the roads referendum, what's the dollar figure for that one? Well, again, that's why we started subcommittee. I mean, we were talking. I th we were. I had I had engineering go. I think we're in the twenty five million dollar range for that. And so that's how we kind of started with a couple of five years ago. Then it jumped to right. six. But uh, right. <laughs> but this one, I think we targeted at we're at twenty five. So again. If if it's thirteen five and the, that twenty five needs to come down, that's why all these meetings kind of kind of have to jive, and kind of happen. So like in like DPW subcommittee understands what JFC is doing and and the reverse. So we just got to all understand if we're going to be overburdening the you know the residents with a lot of stuff. Do we tone it down? We put more on you know thinking that's up to you folks to uh, counselors to kind of decide that path. But again, that's what I. Yeah. Do. A, ref a referendum of approximately 39,000, uh, you know, combined with roads and roofs, you know, that's a pretty steep figure. But the 13 drops back to what the was nine. That? Nine. But again, that's well, I, I, I'm in I'm in favor. <laughs> don't, okay. don't get me wrong, because we we, we this definitely be you know. We need this. We've been talking about this for, for, for a number of years, and uh, so I'm definitely in favor of uh, whether it's thirteen five or even you know the nine nine million. I'm in favor of it, of, of moving forward with it. Okay. With with the backup plan that we already have in place. Yeah, the concurrent. I think that's right. you know, that that's the way to go. Yeah. All right, so for the next agenda, we're going to have Jeff um, bring us back the, the, an update of the 13.5. Okay.
Perfect. Okay. And okay, so that sounds okay. Uh, B school windows um, and vestibules. I kind of touched on this, Charlotte. You're gonna champion looking at windows and how how can we handle, you know, replacing the windows. I know that you know the window replacement isn't necessarily a security issue. It can be for some windows. So you know, I don't know how that's that's going to transpire. So I, you know, if you can touch base with like Gary Harrison and, you know, see if he has any input in that. And I'm hoping that Scott in conjunction with Jonathan, whose iPad died and he's not with us right this, this moment, will work to get the vestibules moving. That's Yeah, we reasonable. meet again. We meet again in about six, seven weeks, but I can email Gary and ask him. Okay. I think, you know, and I think that, you know, they have to understand that we kind of, I, I see this committee as being more of a committee that keeps pushing to get stuff done because we meet so frequently and we do, you know, move on everything that we, we've been assigned to. So we can get, you know, the joint security to kind of buy into a little bit of giving us some leeway as to what we can do in facilities. And if you need to have, you know, um, us go into executive session for that, that is acceptable for us to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. If you need that, Scott, I can, you know, have that happen, all right? Yeah, no, I can email him this evening yeah. and we'll touch base this week, yeah. We don't okay. have to wait. I was just, I just thought our, we were trying to focus on the roofs of the buildings as the envelope that kind of keeps them dry and safe and well well and we are but focusing gonna... on that but i i think with covid and i i just i feel like we need vestibules maybe it's just me personally but i think that it's it's waited long enough that and it, it takes us years to get stuff done so we'll push well, yeah that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen just because you make a phone call right <laughs> Be nice, but it's not. Okay. And a funding plan for, you know, for, you know, vestibules and for, for windows. So if we can get, you know, something that we can send forward. Okay. Any more comments from the committee? Also, everybody knows that the plan of um, conservation and development is out there and people can Go out there, do the survey. I mean, you guys have really a lot of, you know, knowledge of what you need. I've spent an hour and a half with Melissa and I shared everything <laughs> with people that I know around the committee and they, they said they agree as long as they can afford it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was just kind of riffing on um, innovation, ways ways to get some, some sort of innovation into that. But besides the survey, what, do, what are the next steps that we should be aware of. Charlotte, you're on the committee. Can you take over and explain everything, right? Aren't you our person who's going to be on that committee? Well, I volunteered for it, but I still haven't heard anything about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How does a person- So if Charlotte wants to bring us up to speed. I'd but like to, but- Yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Can anybody bring us up to speed? Not that Melissa? I know of yet. Marie? I they even had a meeting. I know nothing. <laughs> I don't believe they've had any meetings yet, have they? What is oh, the okay. composition of the committee and the procedure for applying to be on it? Is it just an existing committee or is it a newly formed committee? It's a newly formed committee. Now, the last time I participated as a citizen and they had round table discussions and I think there were a couple of times so I'm, I'm not quite sure. So I guess that's something that we need to bring to this committee is how can they get more involved? Other than yeah, I looked on the survey. website and I just, you know, I appreciated Donna that you let me give you an earful, but I, I also <laughs> feel like um, a more formal channel might be appropriate. <laughs> and um, I looked on the website, I saw nothing but the survey. I saw nothing about how, you know, how smart people could get involved. All right, well, let's work on that. And that should be posted, so yeah. Yep. 
Okay. And our next meeting is going to be, I get the agenda, the 11th of February. That's not a holiday, is it? Nope. No. Okay. I'm just making sure because that's Lincoln's birthday. I just wanted to make sure. All right. Okay. Any more comments? Take a motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Stay warm. Good night.